In cultural anthropology, sedentism simply refers to the practice of living in one place for a long time. The majority of the Western population belong to sedentary cultures. In evolutionary anthropology and archaeology, it takes on a slightly different sub-meaning and is often applied to the transition from nomadic society to a lifestyle that remains in one place, permanently. Essentially, sedentism means living in groups permanently in one place. Initial requirements for permanent, non-agricultural settlements for small-scale nomadic societies it can be difficult to adopt a sedentary lifestyle in a landscape without on-site agricultural or livestock breeding resources. Since sedentism often requires sufficient year-round, easily accessible local natural resources, non-agricultural sedentism requires good preservation and storage technologies, such as smoking, drying, and fermentation as well as good containers such as pottery, baskets, or special pits in which to securely store food whilst making it available. It was only in locations where the resources of several major ecosystems overlapped that the earliest non-agricultural sedentism occurred. For example, people settled where a river met the sea, at lagoon environments along the coast, at river confluences, or where flat savanna met hills and mountains with rivers. Before agriculture, in the last 30 years archaeological research has shown the earliest sedentism began with on-site agriculture and cattle breeding, and most researchers now believe that sedentism was a prerequisite for the first agriculture to occur. Sedentism usually meant more people, sturdier houses, new stone tools, more jewelry, burials or cemeteries more long-distance goods and also clear signs of social stratification. At sedentary sites usually more people live together for a longer time compared to earlier base camp sites or annual gathering sites. This created deeper cultural layers and thus generally richer archaeological materials. There are also indications that the use of rock art is connected to sedentism, both pre-agricultural and agricultural forms. Criteria for the recognition of sedentism in archaeological studies. In archaeology a number of criteria is necessary for the recognition of either semi or full sedentism. According to Israeli archaeologist Ofer by Yosef they are as follows. 1. Increasing presence of organisms that benefit from human sedentary activities, e.g., house mice, rats, sparrows, 2. Cementum increments on gazelle teeth indications that hunting took place in both winter and summer. 3. Energy expenditure leveling slopes. Building houses. Production of plaster. Transport of undressed stones. Digging of graves. Shaping of large mortars. Historical regions of sedentary settlements. A year-round sedentary site, with its larger population, generates a substantial demand on local naturally occurring resources, a demand that may have triggered the development of deliberate agriculture. In the Middle East the Natchafian culture was the first to become sedentary at around 12,000 BC. The Natchafians were sedentary for more than 2,000 years before they, at some sites, started to cultivate plants around 10,000 BC. However, the first sedentary sites were pre-agricultural, and they appeared during the Upper Paleolithic in Moravia in Europe and on the East European Plain during the interval of C. 25000-17000 BC. The Domon culture in Japan, which was primarily a coastal culture, was sedentary from c. 12,000 to 10,000 BC until the cultivation of rice at some sites in northern Kyushu. In northernmost Scandinavia, there are several early sedentary sites without evidence of agriculture or cattle breeding. They appeared from c. 5300-4500 BC and are all located optimally in the landscape for extraction of major ecosystem resources. In Sweden, the Lilberg at Stone Age village site represents such a site, as do the NYELV site in Norway, and the Lake Anari site in Finland. In northern Sweden, the earliest indication of agriculture occurs at previously sedentary sites.
and one example is the Burslut site used during the period c. 2700-1700 BC, famous for its large caches of long-distance traded flint taxes from Denmark and southernmost Sweden. The evidence of small-scale agriculture at that site can be seen from c. 2300 BC. Historical effects of increased sedentism. Sedentism increased contacts and trade, and the first Middle East cereals and cattle in Europe could have spread through a stepping stone process, where the productive gift were exchanged through a network of large pre-agricultural sedentary sites, rather than a wave of advanced spread of people with agricultural economy, and where the smaller sites found in between the bigger sedentary ones did not get any of the new products. Not all contemporary sites during a certain period were sedentary. Evaluation of habitational sites in northern Sweden indicates that less than 10% of all the sites around 4000 BC were sedentary. At the same time, only 0.5-1% of these represented villages with more than 3 to 4 houses. This means that the old nomadic or migratory lifestyle continued in a parallel fashion for several thousand years, until somewhat or more sites turned to sedentism, and gradually switched over to agricultural sedentism. The shift to sedentism is coupled with the adoption of new subsistence strategies specifically from foraging to agricultural and animal domestication. The development of sedentism led to the rise of population aggregation and formation of villages, cities, and other community types. In North America, evidence for sedentism emerges around 4500 BC. Forced sedentism Forced sedentism or sedentarization occurs when the dominant group restricts the movements of a nomadic group. Nomadic populations have undergone such a process since the first cultivation of land. The organization of the modern society have imposed demands that have pushed aboriginal populations to adopt a fixed habitat. There are many examples of forced sedentarization with detrimental effects on minority groups in developed countries. The fate of many formerly nomadic groups has mainly been determined by policies instituted during Western colonialism or by modern Western governments. The ongoing destruction of nomadic people's ways of life constitutes a decline in human diversity and contributes to the hegemony of Western civilization. This has caused great social decline and weakens the ethnic identities of affected populations. As examples show of North American indigenous peoples such as the Inuit in the mid-20th century, at the end of the 19th and throughout the 20th century many previously nomadic tribes have turned to permanent settlement. It was a process initiated by local governments, and it was mainly a global trend forced by the changes in the attitude to the land and real property and also due to state policies. Among these nations are Negev Bedouin in Jordan, Israel and Egypt, Bashkirs, Kyrgyz, Kazakhs in Soviet Russia, Tibetan nomads in China, Babongo in Gabon, Baka in Cameroon, etc.